Greetings and welcome to Weld.com. My name is Elwin Zim or the One Zim from Instagram. They call me the King of Brass, but today I'm going to show you how to weld copper to steel. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get to learn our materials first. Everyone's excited about the copper, so let's talk copper first. Copper comes in three different types. It comes in the lightweight, which is type M, a medium weight, which is type L, and a heavier weight, which is type K. Now you will notice a difference in welding each of these types. They will weld differently. Um, obviously type M is gonna be a lightweight copper. It's gonna weld a little bit uh, on the hotter side. If you weld type K, it will weld much smoother. But for today's demonstration, we're gonna weld type L. Please take a note of the difference of the wall thicknesses between type M and type L. It is not a lot, but it's enough for you're gonna be able to notice it while you're welding. Next up, a common question that is asked is what's the difference between carbon and mild steel? Well, the answer is simply that mild steel is a type of carbon steel. All steel contains carbon, but when carbon is the primary alloying element, that steel is carbon steel. So we will be working with carbon steel, saddle cut, schedule 40, three and a half inch diameter. Okay, now that we know more about the material that we're going to be working with today, let's discuss some other stuff. I get asked an awful lot about what are my settings and the gas and the torch setup. So let's address that now, okay? The machine that I chose for my home shop is the Lincoln Square Wave 200. Now the reason that I did this is because it has just enough amperage to pretty much weld anything that I wanna weld at home, but for a very reasonable price point. I'm not rich. Um, and I've got a fresh bottle of argon hooked up, ready to go for the demonstration. Uh, now you can substitute the argon for helium. Just understand that if you substitute the argon for helium, you're also substituting uh, your arc control. You will have a less stable arc using helium, but it will be much hotter. So that would be something that if you're welding type K copper, remember we were discussing that earlier, uh, you might consider using helium. But remember, you're substituting your arc control for that, that extra heat. So if you're using a Lincoln Square Wave 200, like I am, you're gonna have a 17 style torch, air cooled. Everything's gonna be a little bit bigger, a little chunkier, but I think we'll be able to fight through it. Now, everything on my torch is gonna to be standard except for the gas lens. I swapped out the collet body for a gas lens. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's something that I like to do. Uh, it will help with your gas coverage and gas coverage is gonna be very important for this process. Um, also, something that's worth noting, I'm using a number five stubby cut. Um, this is going to give me better control of where my electrode is pointing because I'm going to have to focus most of my heat directly onto the copper because of the thermal conductivity of the copper. You're going to notice that when we start this weld pool, if you put your electrode too close to the steel, the steel is going to melt like water compared to the copper. So make sure that you're using something that you feel comfortable with. Me, I personally feel comfortable with a gas lens thoriated tungsten, and a stubby cup. So the rundown on settings on our machine is gonna go a little bit like this. I'm gonna turn this bad boy on and I'm gonna crank it all the way up to 200. You're gonna need every single amp and probably a little bit of patience waiting for the puddle to form because copper, although it has a fairly low melting point and compared to steel, it has something called thermal conductivity which means that it holds heat. It's gonna take a little while for it to warm up enough to actually melt. Now, this is where people always wanna disagree and argue about this with me. The, the fact is, is that what we're doing is actually welding these two materials together. This is not a braze. We are not TIG brazing, we are welding. The difference is brazing, you do not melt the base metal. In this instance, and you will see it, we are forming a puddle on the copper, meaning it is melting, which then makes this a weld. So we're going to turn this on, turn it all the way up, 
make sure we're on DC. We're not doing this on AC. That would not fend well for us. And you will see, we will be melting the base metal when we weld this. So let's, let's turn it on and give it a go. So what is silicon bronze? And why do I use that as the filler metal to join copper and steel? It's very simple. Silicon bronze is a low lead brass alloy that generally is composed of about 96% copper. So I think it's safe to say it's copper based. It has about 3% silicon, which really helps neutralize the zinc components of the copper. Uh, and whatever is left is um, a variety of other alloys like manganese, iron, and zinc, all of which are contained also in carbon steel. So it kind of makes it the perfect and correct thing to use to join these two things together. One of the concerns of welding dissimilar metals like copper to steel is gonna be zinc. This copper contains a large amount of zinc. You're not gonna to wanna to breathe that stuff in. Uh, a lot of the videos that I post on Instagram or the photographs that you see on my page, you'll notice a white powdery residue left behind after the weld is over. That stuff gets into the air, it will get into your lungs and it will make you sick. So please, please wear a respirator. Protect your lungs. You do not want to get zinc poisoning. It is not fun. Believe me, I know. You want to make sure that you get this edge on the inside nice and clean all the way around and along the outside edge where you're going to be welding. Now what you should have when you're finished is something that looks just like this. Nice and clean around that inside edge where your root cast is going to be. And clean the outside, get all the paint or mill scale or anything that might be on there off. Make a good clean welding surface. That's what you want right there. Now get comfortable, make sure your electrode is pointing directly onto the copper. Pump as much amps as you can into that until it starts to pool up. Add your filler metal and then wash it up onto the steel. Notice that I am pointing my electrode directly onto the copper and washing up at about a 45 degree angle. As the copper heats up, I let it pull. I add my filler rod and I'm washing it up onto the steel. Notice the 45 degree angle in which my torch is being held directly wow. pointing to the copper again. Once it starts to pull up, Add my filler rod, wash it up to the steel. That steel is going to melt very quickly and add a lot of material, so be gentle with how much filler you're adding. Notice my torch angle is still going to be at 45 degrees, directly pointing at the copper. I'm about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch away from the copper material. Uh, let it pull up, add your filler, wash it up to the steel. Once that steel melts, it's going to add a lot of material there. So just be gentle with the amount of filler you're adding. Always end your tack on the copper. We're using 1 8 size silicon bronze. Now as the copper heats up, you're going to want to move fairly quickly. Add your filler and wash forward as well as onto the steel. You're gonna to wanna to just barely eat the edge of the steel away. So as you're filling up, move up towards that edge and eat that edge away. Try to maintain the same angle 
for the entire well. Leave it run for a minute. Your completed root should look something like this. It does not have to be beautiful. It's going to be covered up with a cap anyway. All right, in this shot, you can clearly see how my torch is angled facing the material head on to let it warm up. I add my filler and drag it forward. And you'll notice that my angle is going to change slightly when I reach the saddle portion. My goal here is basically to just bond that material as much as possible for my root to avoid leaks. This one came out much smoother. So let's take a look at that weld. From this angle, you'll be able to tell now, as the puddle is filling up with filler, it just barely clips that edge of the steel and I move forward and fill up again. You fill, move forward, fill, move forward. The whole time my electrode is going to be aiming directly into the copper and just let the heat do its work on the steel. Now, I don't typically do a lot of downhill welding. Uh, but in order to get this shot, I did downhill welding. I do not recommend doing a lot of downhill using these two materials. Make sure you give your pipe a good cleaning. <laughs> That's for you, Oki. <laughs> As you see, I have no cracks, no holes. It doesn't have to be pretty. I'm going to cap it anyway. We're using 1 16th sib wire or silicon bronze. We're going to start our weld directly on the root pass and then wash down onto the copper to let it heat up. Now you're going to notice that I do not keep my filler metal within the shielding gas. I do this for a specific reason. It affords me the unique opportunity to use my filler metal as a tool to keep my weld pool clean. When welding these two materials, your weld pool will get very trashy. Now it's best if you can move that trash right along with you as you're walking. Keeping that trash out of your weld is going to make sure that you don't get uh, a hole or any leaks or any cracking. So when you see me flick that filler rod, that's what I'm doing. I am moving the trash that's floating to the surface to the, big, the very front of my weld pool. You're also going to see that I stop and pause on the copper. Every time that I am aiming towards that copper, I'm stopping and pausing on it for just a little bit of time to ensure that it's being melted properly. Now when I end this bead, I'm going to wash towards the copper and end the bead there. As that copper is going to be the stronger of these two substances. No avoid a hole. And this is what you should look like afterwards, if you've kept it clean. With this particular angle, you're going to see that I'm using my 1 16th silicon bronze wire to add as I'm on the steel and drag it down to the copper and hold. Now, as I'm holding on the copper, I'll usually give it a flick to clean the trash out of the weld pool. I'm going to add, drag it down, flick it. Now, as I'm coming around and it's getting hotter, I'm going to flick both top and bottom to keep that trash out. Add, flick, add, add, flick, add. All the time, I'm also using my foot control 
to pump more heat into the copper than the steel. And this is what she should look like. All right, guys, that about wraps this one up. I hope that you found this to be helpful. If you have any questions, please just drop that down in the comments section. Check me out on Instagram at the one Zim, and definitely download the Weld app today to get connected to our global welding community. Appreciate you guys watching.